Welcome to the complete collection of John Stockton's greatest stories. First and foremost, I want to say a massive thank you to everybody who's been supporting this series thus far. You guys have shown a lot of love and it's making this a very exciting series to continue on with. If you have missed any of the videos in the series, there is a link down below in the description box and on the screen right now. You can click on that link and it will take you to a playlist that has every episode so far of this series. But today, we're looking at John Stockton's greatest stories. These episodes take a long time to make, with all the editing, finding all the footage, piling all the clips together, piecing it up. It takes a long time to make these videos, so I'd really appreciate it if you guys could help me out just by hitting that like button. It really helps the videos out. If you are new, feel free to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that notification button so you never miss an episode in this series. Lastly, comment down below which player you would like to see next in this series and without further ado, Welcome to the complete collection of John Stockton's greatest stories. I can remember uh, coming into camp and seeing things he was doing. I was like, God, I, I used to think my point guard was good. I said, oh, he's good. If you were starting a franchise today, who's your number one pick out of all the players in the NBA? I'll tell you, you won't believe this, but I like Johnny Stockton. I think he's the most complete person in his position. One of the greatest point guards that ever played the game. I've always said I think John Stockton is the perfect point guard. You can't be fooled by that, you know, real nice face and, you know, that real quiet demeanor. When he stepped on the court, he was out to get you. A guy who probably controlled a team and a game better than anybody I've ever seen. Probably one of the greatest players that ever played the game in his position. His sense of where he was on the floor, his, his peripheral vision, You'd say, how did he see him? Huh? Oh, he's over there, boom, he throws the pass over there. You can't teach what John Stockton can see. It's one of those guys, every team wants a guy like John Stockton. John Stockton was, he's one of the best I ever played against, but those were illegal picks. Let's get that out the way. I played against John since I was 13 years old, and he's a much better outside shooter, much better with the basketball, and, and when you're talking about you know, Nash and Stockton, I just think from a, a toughness standpoint, I, I, don't, I don't think there's a comparison. Well, he's the best point guard of all time. When you played against John, I mean, you, you had to bring your lunch. I mean, yep. you know, there, there was a toughness about him that he carried that, you know, I don't know if we have anybody in our game today that, that, that really brings that, that to the top. Anybody got really got under your skin? Uh, no question. Kenny touched on it earlier. You, you, you play a playoff series and you go against a guy over and over again, it's inevitable. And we played Utah two years in a row, six games, so 12 games against John Stockton. John was one of the strongest guards in the league. I don't know if you guys felt that. Oh, I, was, I got hit by one of them screens. Yeah, yeah he was, <laughs> but, but the toughness, the, the, the competitiveness. Mm -hmm. And I have the greatest respect for him. I see him away from the court, love him, great guy. But he was a dirty bastard. <laughs> oh, whoa! Dirty whoa, bastard. Whoa, dirty bastard. Whoa, Steve, come on. Oh, I'm letting it out. I'm oh, letting it out. I'm letting it go. go. I've never seen a therapist about this. I'm gonna, this is my time. Let to it go. Let it there out. you go. go. I can tell you feel oh, better. Oh, 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 take the couch. Wait, Mr. Tongue is out. Full extension. Keep. On oh, MJ and yeah. Stockton got involved. And Michael looked at Stockton and said, don't do that. And now Stockton comes up and gives it right back to Michael. We started this off, this ball game off, by saying that he does little things like that to drive you nuts. <laughs> oh my God. Hey, John, John was a person that would this stretch is the, the boundary. The PG version of what yeah, like a person. Am I allowed to he say was, that word on TV? Yeah. Already sure. already got it. On NBA <laughs> TV, you are. You say a lot worse than Come that. Come on. No, 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 on NBA TV, I don't. You, you can say, <laughs> you can say dirty as like much as you want. It's like HBO. NBA TV is like HBO. You know, I, think that, I think that John understood there's a, there's a, 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 a personal space law, and he understood how to invade that. And as a guard, you know, when I'm talking to you, Ernie, I'm going to talk to you here. But John, 
Exactly. This is a, the this European, European, comfortable even in the state. Kind of European way. A little bit closer than you said. You're shooting a jump shot. It's respect that a guy shooting a jump shot that you can't block it, so you kind of just contest. John made like he could block it, and he'd get under your feet. Or and I, when you're running out, the ball is out of bounds, he's running out, he'd like this trip that he would do, and all of a sudden a guy would trip and they throw the ball in at the same time and he'd go down and lay it in. So he had a lot of those type of bastardly moves. <laughs> no. <laughs> the first person that you ran into that, that like bust your ass, that you, you knew that was like, man, this shit for real. Like, who was the first person that, that you ran into and it was like, man, it's a level. John Stockton. John Stockton embarrassed me, dog. Yeah. Like John Stockton made me feel like, like, damn, dog. Like, do I know how to play basketball? You know, you had that moment where you like, shit. Like, am I sorry, dog? Like, what the <laughs> fuck? Am I, well, you know, like, what the fuck is going on? I had never been taking out the game so fast. He had ripped me like twice. Yeah. Like, and not even like just being ripped heady. stole the ball. It's just like being heady, smarter than you. You know, I'm going for the outlet the wrong way. You know what I mean? Boom, steal. You know what I mean? I get the loose ball. Oh, he gone steal. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna have to do something. He see your mistakes. And he Everything. was tough, hey, hard nose. He was, nose he was too. Hey, take you under the big screens. The yeah, pit. like hey, I remember. Was he way bigger than what you thought he was? Yeah, he was. He was way bigger yeah. than what I he thought was he was. Ta- he was a lot taller. Yeah. Like, you know, when you look at him on the court, on TV, you know, like his look could be deceiving. Yeah. It's almost like how Steph Curry looked. Like on TV, he looked like, oh man, like he just looked like a regular dude. Yeah, but like right. when you stand next to him, like, yo, this motherfucker, like, he built like an athlete, yeah. yeah. John Stockton, though, he would like, he was so dope, dog, because he he walk you all the way down to the wing, right. right? And he'd walk you to the same spot, whether you pressuring him or not. Like, he knew what spot he was going to get to. He knew right. what he was going to, like, he was fucked once he got to the spot right, that he yeah. was going to get to. Best point guard to ever play the game is who? Oh, John Stockton. Magic Johnson. I mean, th- those are the those those two are the best to probably ever play it. What, what did Stockton do better than you? Um, he, I think he had like three thousand. He set the <laughs> table. He, <laughs> I think he had five thousand more assists than I did. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. And steals. I mean, he's the all-time assist leader in steals, and uh, you know people don't really talk about the steals as much as the assists. But you know he plays both sides of the court, and uh, that's what makes him a complete player. Uh, look, when you look at those records, it's just it's it's amazing, and I, I just don't think he gets the due that he deserves. Well, he played in Utah. That's why. Well, yes, I, I that's that's fine, but still, I think sometimes he's left out of the mix of you know great point guards, great great point guards and and we forget to sometimes mention him all right now i i remember one story when we had lost a few games in a row we were back east and we were in charlotte okay and someone uh namely some a point guard named john stockton uh, had heard overheard something supposedly on the radio that uh grandmama larry johnson had said about mailman do you remember this yeah, he, he 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 got my goat that night. Got he, he got me. He needed, he needed something to Man, get us going. Mailman went, I think, for fifty six that night. Yeah, and I got every pass, I think, from from stock. <laughs> right. You and, wouldn't. And you fabricated the, a quote. Is that is yes, that the story you made up? A he, quote? Lied. he lied. So forget to fabricate. He lied. Okay. I had, Steve, I had I had some reliable sources <laughs> <laughs> that told I'll always me, get away with reliable sources that, that told me that somebody had said something. I merely relayed what I had heard. He's from training for a career source. in journalism. This guy's got all the makings of no, a no, no. guy. You hear reliable source. My source told me. Okay. <laughs> I've never really gotten over. My first year, I got traded to Houston, and he had to shout over me to to send the Jazz to the finals. Russell will inbound at half court. Stockton, open three. Hit it! John Stockton sends the Utah Jazz to the NBA Finals. That was so many things all wrapped up into one. It was it was our first chance to go to the championship. It was really the first time we'd been able to beat Houston at anything or or they just year after year we kept running those guys in the playoffs and and to finally get over that hump. That was I think a a snapshot of John Stockton that we have never seen before I think other than the night that uh, he was honored at the Delta Center the most emotional 
we've ever seen him. Welcome back to Primetime Stockton. And Larry, uh, you watched that again, I saw, with great, yep. uh, great detail, attention to detail. Yep, and i got to tell you <clears throat> what happened in that play. And if you, <laughs> now if you can see it again, uh, it, <clears throat> it would mean even more. But at the timeout, the coaches are overdoing their thing, and Carl says, hang on. <laughs> he says, let me tell you what we ought to do. He says, Stockton, I guarantee you, you will be open. Now, and, so and that they, pick they went to stock. Now they called a pick. Okay, he didn't pick Drexler. He grabbed Drexler. Drexler wasn't going anywhere all night, <laughs> and, and he didn't get called for it because they were watching stock. And then yeah. the infamous Bill Walton, uh oh, uh -oh. <laughs> and he drilled it. That was that had to be one of the great moments in jazz history. Uh -oh. Stockton, open three. Yeah! I, I was going to come to you about that because so many people miss the pick, which is the reason the whole thing worked. And as Larry said, it really wasn't a pick. It was, it was like fourth and one and you stopped the running back. Well, it's, it's like in a, in a game like that, you know, I, I think one of the all-time greatest games, you force a referee to make a call. Make, make him make an offensive foul call. And you know, not a lot of them would do it. So I had it in my mind that if it's any time <laughs> that they're going to do it, which who knows what would happen, I said, you know what, Stock? I said, you're going to be open. He looked at me, he said, okay. And Coach Sloan looked and just sit down. Like, you guys go on and do what you want to do. And I went out there, and it's like, that's the only thing that came to my mind is not just say bear hugging, but hold him and, and see what happened. And when Stock was so open, when the ball left his hand, I knew it was in. It's just one of those things. So it was like, man, it was unbelievable. So. Most memorable play in your career? Oh, yes. By four, that play right there. And he had a lot of them, but just that play right there. And I think that's the most excited I've ever seen John. And, but it's like some of, the, some of the hits he took in the game for me. And people need to go back and realize half of those points I wouldn't have got unless I wide open under the basket. But just, just the intensity and what he brought to the game was just, I don't know, it's just unbelievable. Josh Hacken was one of the toughest guys I've ever played against there. Uh, we had a series on uh, the playoffs. It was our first series in Sacramento. And uh, we were playing against Utah, great Carmelo and Stockton. And I felt that our team was in awe of them. Uh, we were younger. And so I told Coach uh, Adam before the game, I said, uh, on the first play of the game, I'm going to lay Stockton's ass out. <laughs> and Coach said, are you sure? I said, yeah. I said, trust me, Coach. <laughs> it's the first game. We just need to do it. Like, you know, they're – they're prepared for everything that's coming. They don't expect it. I lay him out on the screen. I'm talking about I lay him out one of the best screens I ever did. Got my shoulder kind of in that head area, too, to kind of make it a little dirty. He pops up off the ground, pats me on the butt, and says, nice screen. <laughs> you, you know, do, you, do you know how uh, demoralizing that is? You, you know what I mean? So, yeah, he's, he was one of the toughest guys, and I loved it, too. After that game, we would play him in the playoffs, and I would make rookies wait on the bus, and I would say, watch the baddest man in the world pull up. And they're like, what do you mean? They think I'm going to talk about, like, his cars and all this. And John Stockton would come to the game, literally in a minivan, <laughs> pop his kids out, come in there, and bust us up. And he would show up, and he would probably have a plaid shirt on and, you know, jeans or something. His hair parted neatly on the side. Looked, he'd be so unassuming. He'd be a guy that they'd probably check his ID in other arenas. Oh, oh, yeah. You even thought he was, uh, you know, coming straight out of Catholic Church. Uh, <laughs> one of the, the kids up there, you know, lighting the candles. Or, or you thought, yeah, he was the valet. You definitely didn't think he was as bad a man as he was. But he knew that. And he, he knew that being on the Sumo was part, of, was part of his swagger. So he knew that. And he used that to his advantage, too. And every once in a while, on the bus, we would hear it from the back of the bus coming, coming out. You know, some, some cliche that I had, you know. And the guy wasn't ready. When we called on him, we pushed his button, but he wasn't ready. And John could imitate that. Deadly, you're making a million a year. Griffith, you're making 500,000, 300,000, 600,000. What's Larry Bird worth? 18 million, 20 million? He's kicking our butts. <laughs> He was trying to motivate us. We were down by 20, so we went out and lost by 30. A guy who still apparently gets in fights at pickup games, if we can believe what we hear in Spokane, Washington. Well, the thing about Stock, and, and I have to go back to Coach and Larry, 
one of the, if not the toughest per, uh, player I ever played with. Uh, literally, guy used to, when he, he used to set picks for me, and I felt bad. I knew the ball was coming to me. <laughs> every single time he would set a pick, in every game, I would say, God, stop, be careful. And he looked like, what? You know? And then after the game, his shoulder would be literally swollen. And I just remember a time in training camp where he was going after a loose ball. And, of course, I hit Stock thinking it was somebody else who was picking on Stock during, during the practice, another guard, because we, you know, had our little thing, and it was Stock. So I hit the wrong guy, and <laughs> Stock just brushed it off. Like, well, I, I knew what you meant to do. But he was, he was like one of the toughest guys that I've ever played with. You said that he was the one guy you just could not get under his skin. That you couldn't get under their skin. Were there John guys? John Stockton. John Stockton. Really? Could never. How is that? Because John Stockton never said anything to no one. He didn't never say nothing to me. When I go at him and I say something about him, he'll just walk like he didn't see me, like I wasn't even there. He doesn't go out there and, and, and play around with the game. He's very serious about it. He's a smart basketball player. You know, everybody say he's dirty, but I, I think that's wrong. I think that's that's not a statement for him. I think that he doesn't understand. He goes out and play basketball the way he knows how to play, hard. He always just stayed away from me. He didn't say a thing to me, and it got to me so much because what he did was is he just didn't pay attention to me. And then if, if, I, if I say something, anything about him, I cuss or anything, he'll just walk away. And that was a problem. When you don't give me a response, that really hurts me because then I, uh, you're not listening to me. And he was the only guy that ever did that, never listened to me. And I said, what am I doing? And then all of a sudden, <laughs> and then all of a sudden he'll tell me, he'll take a charge, he'll get me on the bench, and then he'll just look at me and nod. <laughs> and then I figured it out. I said, I got to stop talking to him. I just got a plane. And I, I got to beat him with, with, with what he does. Don't say nothing to him and, and go at him. And when I start going at him and I figured him out, uh, they start doubling me and they start switching players on me. And they, they didn't let him guard me for, at one point. And then I said, okay, I, I figured him out. Hmm. I figured him out. Don't say nothing. Just go at him. And then the game become, became more competitive with me and him. It wasn't wow. like I was scared of him. Hardest person you ever guarded, man. I'm gonna say John Stockton, man. I've been getting a lot of slack for this guy here. <laughs> um, everybody's been asking me why he is the toughest person to guard other than Mike, instead of Michael Jordan. First of all, it's my opinion. So that's the way it's gonna go. <laughs> you you read good. some headlines today. Good. Because you said that John Stockton was more difficult to defend than Michael Jordan. Blasphemy Ooh. to me. And you how, you have to defend yourself because I'm how often do you really guard Michael Jordan? Man, listen. He was a guy who was uh, fundamentally sound. He would set picks. He would do the right thing. He would shoot 12 times, uh, make 10, he would, and all that. He, he was just he great. Was, he wasn't tougher you than just, Jordan. Yes, he was. You just oh, didn't. Yes, he was. Gary. You guys didn't Gary. play against him. I did. Gary. Let me ask you this seriously, because when you say that, people are going to be like, "Are you joking me?" And they did today. A lot of people. Right, I know a lot of people. So and I got to get a, enough just, time to explain. Not just based it. off the number of times that you saw John Stockton, but you're saying that he was more fundamentally sound than Michael Jordan. We we're more athletic than he was. We were mad because he said picks and said he was dirty. If a guy comes and shoots 12 times, makes nine of them, shoots eight free throws and makes seven of them, that's 20-something points and have 15 assists and four steals a game and works out with Carl Malone and can deal it on a continuous basis and I have to play against him nine and seven and nine times a year, that is hard Gary, to call. No, I Gary, believe that. Gary, let's be honest. You just didn't like playing him because he, nope. he, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't talk back to you. True, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. That's a, that's a thing, too. He wouldn't talk back to me. With Michael Jordan, he's a competitor. He's going to go back at me. That is easier for me to deny him the ball right. and do a lot of things. Wow. Then he gave you 50. Oh. He didn't give me 50. <laughs> <laughs> you got to read your, get your stats right, baby. Um, just a little short story about him. He's the only guy, when I got in the NBA and I wasn't as good as I thought I was going to be for the first two years, uh, I watched him. And when I watched him, He's a player that all kids watch right now. I might have been more athletic than he was, but he did it the same way every night, every night. Uh, for a guy, for him to only play 32 minutes, come in and shoot the ball 12 times, make nine or 10 of them shots, shoot eight free throws and make seven of them, 
and then have 15 assists and four steals. That's the reason why he's the hardest person I ever had to guard, and that's why I respect him very much. Players were playing Papa Shot with each other, and it was winner stays on. Well, after we've been playing for a while, this 12-year-old kid in a wheelchair comes up to John and, and wants to, or comes to the, you know, can I play? You got, yeah, you can. Well, it turns out the kid's pretty good, and it's apparent that he's going to beat John. John gets up and starts blocking his shot. <laughs> And I thought, wait a minute, there's something wrong with this picture. And then I realized there wasn't really anything wrong with it. It was just a very clear definition of how competitive John Stockton is. One of the stories I got is his toughness. Uh, uh, it was a tournament of Americas, and we was in uh, Portland, Oregon, and he did something to his leg where his leg actually wouldn't bend back out. And it would always flare up every now and then, every once or two years, actually, where well, the a bone will pop out. So we had training camp in uh, in Chicago, and we stretching. <laughs> as, as we were stretching, ready to get up, Stock couldn't get up. So he looked over at me and say, "So of course I knew what it was." So he called the trainer over, the 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 trainer from Miami, and he said, "Look, you need to pull on this really hard, and it'll pop back in." Well. This guy here wanted no liability at all. <laughs> so I watched as he did it himself. When he went to the Olympics, you know, he, he had a broken fibula and uh, a lot of players, it would have been a way to cop out. I made the Olympic team, but I broke my leg or something. Uh, but he continued to compete. There are a lot of great players in this league, uh, but somehow they, they seem to get injured or miss games. And uh, John Stockton, you pretty much can pencil in 82 games every year, and you know what you're going to get. It doesn't matter uh, if he's banged up, if he's sore, if he's hurt. You know he's going to be there. You know he's going to play the minutes, and you know he's going to produce. You know, it was he shouldn't have played a number of games, and he was hurt sometimes so bad that I wouldn't even get eye contact with him in the game. I'd just say, "How you doing? Oh, I'm fine. I'm ready, I'm ready to play." Never use excuses. You know, I, I've seen him. You know, with a little nagging injury here, a little nagging injury there. And right at game time, I say, are you ready to go? Yep. And that has been John Stockton's greatest stories. If you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate if you guys could hit that like button. It really helps the channel out. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification button so you never miss an episode of this series. Comment down below which player you'd like to see next, and here are two episodes of this series you might enjoy. With that said, I am out. Peace.